Hello everyone, hope you're doing all right. Hope you're keeping safe. Hope you're keeping sane. Yes, it's crazy Boris hair day today. Um, <laughs> I don't know where my hat is and I couldn't be bothered to go and find it, to be honest with you. Um, another video today and another video that is responding directly to one of your guys' questions. Um, someone recently put in the comment section and said, I play the fob tees occasionally uh, on a casual basis. I don't believe I have an addiction, but uh, I do do it quite regularly and I'm a bit concerned. Uh, and they basically said, uh, do I think that everyone who gambles regularly has a gambling problem? Um, I'm paraphrasing, of course. Again, I, uh, I'm a terrible memory. Can't remember exactly what they said. And I'm too lazy to pull up another window and actually uh, actually find out exactly what it was that they said. But the, the principle of it was, can you gamble and not have a gambling problem? Um, and my answer is, as it always is, uh, in multiple parts, because, you know, you know I love to ramble. Um Firstly, no. Um, I don't think that when you gamble, or if you gamble, or if you gamble regularly, um, that you necessarily have a gambling problem. However, I do believe that if you gamble regularly, you are obviously more susceptible to developing a gambling problem. And quite often with gambling, you're not really ever going to be aware whether or not your gambling is a problem until such a time as you try to stop or you decide you need to stop or you try and limit it or reduce it in some way or another. Um, what I do also believe, and one of the main things I want to talk about in this video, is that I believe the way in which you gamble and the means by which you gamble, whilst it doesn't necessarily single you out as a gambling addict or not a gambling addict, can you know determine how likely you are to develop a problem with gambling or how likely you are to develop this as an addiction or possibly how likely you are to already be uh, a problem gambler or a gambling addict but maybe not be, uh, not be quite aware of it. Um, in the particular example that the, the gentleman who commented uh, on my videos um, gave, he said, well, he plays the, the fob tees um, regularly. Um, not frequently, from what I could understand, but regularly. And I would suggest that fob tees are possibly, um, in fact, I would say possibly, almost certainly one of the worst, if not the worst form of gambling for addiction for both targeting adult um sorry targeting addicts and also for creating them now the biggest problem i have with fob tees thankfully not a problem at all at the moment because they're closed one good thing to come out of lockdown main problem with fob tees is their accessibility and even with the new legislation which limits them to a two pound a spin um the the relative high stakes and the relative high rewards so two pound maximum spin although as we know the bookies have got round that with spin bar roulette and all the rest of it um, but relatively high stakes and a 500 pound jackpot so again a relatively high potential return to the player and also the main problem with fob tees and the reason i believe there's such an issue for potential gamblers or potential problem gamblers is their accessibility every high street has multiple bookmakers unless you're very very lucky and you live somewhere like Southwold, where they uh, expressly dismiss all applications, so fair play to them. But most high streets in most towns and cities will have multiple bookmakers. Most parade of shops you find in housing estates and developed areas will have at least one bookmakers. And these are always, well, generally within walking distance of virtually every person in the country, unless you live in a remote rural area you will have relatively easy access to high stakes high return gambling within walking distance from your house and certainly within driving distance for, for virtually everyone so that is the reasons why i believe fob tees are particularly dangerous so going back to the original question do i believe that everyone who gambles is an addict i would say no and i'll give some examples in but a moment but I would say if you are finding yourself playing fob tees regularly, certainly if you find yourself playing fob tees frequently, then it might be worth considering looking at, um, you know, something like the uh, GA sort of quiz. I can't remember what they call it. It's like 15 questions, isn't it? Which help you to determine whether maybe you do have a gambling addiction or whether you're certainly in the at-risk group of developing a gambling addiction. And the reason, apart from the accessibility and the high stakes, I believe 
that Vobtees are, gam- in a sense, almost gambling for gambling's sake. There is nothing pleasant, there is nothing positive, there is nothing fun, I wouldn't say, or enjoyable about going into a bookmaker's or a betting shop and playing on a fob tea machine. Bookmakers, I've said in previous videos, I believe are one of the single most depressing, single most soul-destroying places you can actually go to and places you can actually spend your time. And I think that if you are choosing in that respect to, to spend time in that way, then you maybe have to look at your, your reasoning behind going there. Now, there are ways in which I believe um, this could be justified, gambling can be justified, because it is everywhere now, isn't it? You know, it's, it's very much part of our society. It's part of uh, our culture, certainly here um, in the Western world. And I know, obviously, in Africa, um, I'm going off tangent, of course, but I know that other parts of the developing world are really having problems now with the upcoming of automated gambling. But certainly here in the Western world, it is very much ingrained in our culture. It's ingrained in what we do and it's ingrained in our advertising it's ingrained in our sport isn't it you know football now is as much about betting and about gambling on the the results and on next corners and next cards and all the rest of it as it is actually on the sport itself and there's something like 70 percent now of premier league and championship teams are now um, sponsored by betting and by gambling companies so it's something that's so ingrained in our culture that it is available everywhere you go to the checkout in a supermarket, there's the scratch cards there. The National Lottery is played daily, weekly, whatever now, and it's there, right in front of you when you just go to do your grocery shopping. There are fruit machines in pubs and other um, locations, and there is forms of gambling everywhere. Even if you watch primetime TV, I mean, I was watching um, Saturday Night Takeaway for my sins with my, uh, my wife and what have you at the weekend, and there are inbuilt two, I believe, inbuilt competitions within the show itself, which are forms of gambling. So yes, it is everywhere, and most forms of gambling have a social or an entertainment aspect to them. You know, if you're in the pub, you're probably in there with friends. So playing the fruit machine can be a bit of entertainment and form part of your social you know your social occasion going to the races can be part of a social occasion i've been to the races um both gambling and not gambling with friends with stag do's things like that and it's part of a social occasion going to the arcade at the seaside is normally part of a day out you know it's part of one of my some of my earliest memories of gambling in any form is as a child playing the 2p fruit machines at the seaside so that was part of a a day out and the reason i say the fob tees i believe are you know a danger sign for potential problem gamblers is because there is no reason to be in a bookmaker. There is no reason to be in there playing those machines unless you are there purely to gamble. Nobody goes in these places for recreation and whilst you do get people in there chatting because they know each other, it's certainly not something that can be tagged on to a social occasion. There is one purpose and one purpose only for those places and that is to gamble your money. So if you find yourself, I believe, going into bookies all the time, playing the fob tees, then you know, check yourself, make sure that you're okay, make sure you're not doing it um, more than you should, make sure you're not spending money that you shouldn't, make sure you're not spending time that you shouldn't, because we all know that that's possibly you know the biggest loss of all is the loss of time, opportunities and relationships that you would otherwise have. Um, can I, do I believe you can gamble and not be a problem gambler? Yes. Um, I do. I hope I could cite several examples. My father, for one, um, if he ever does go to the pub, which is infrequent these days, but if he ever does, he'll have his change from his beer, maybe in the fruit machine. And, uh, you know, I think he's probably bought a couple of lottery tickets in the last year, but, um, you know, there's no way he, you know, I could ever put him in the bracket of gambler, prob- of problem gambler. Is he susceptible to it? Of course. You know, the first you know, thing you stake, the first pound you put in a fruit machine, the first time you buy a lottery ticket, yes, you are at risk, but there is a way of mitigating, a way of minimising that risk by and firstly being aware, but also by looking at the ways and your patterns of behaviour when it comes to gambling. Um, I've got a few comments actually on my video I did about winning the lottery. Will I still, uh, or sorry, will I go back to gambling um, if I won the lottery, or if I was still gambling, will I still gamble if I won the lottery? And people said, well, you shouldn't be doing it at all. If you're if you're off gambling, and you're absolutely right, um, the lottery, of course, is a form of gambling because there's a stake and a prize. Um, but as I've spoken about previously, I think that um, you know with the lottery, it, it functions in such a 
slow way it doesn't necessarily you know hit the the spot in terms of a gambling addiction which thrives on speed on repetition and on that suspense between stake and result which is ultimately what causes the dopamine here which causes the addiction so i think yes you can gamble in many different ways you can even gamble you know online and what have you um, and and not be a problem gambler but as soon as you start gambling regardless of its format you know you are at risk of developing a problem and it's very very important that if you are a casual gambler or you do um, or, or you know would would describe yourself as a recreational gambler that you do keep your eye on it um, and you regularly check how much money you're spending how much time you're spending um, and whether this is potentially becoming a problem to you like I say, if you're paying the lottery once a week and buying a couple of tickets, I think you're probably safe for now. If you find yourself drifting into um, bookmakers, playing fob tees, if you find yourself going to casinos when it's not necessarily part of a, a social event, a social occasion, you know, just, just be aware that there are certainly types of, of gambling that are more aggressive um, and more predatory than others. I hope that answered the question um, to the, uh, the gentleman that asked. Um, I hope you find that video interesting. Thanks for all your continued support. Thank you for watching. Um, and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers, guys.